Hi, Joe Castaway Coolis. Happy St. Patrick's Day from Inside the Great Outdoors, Cleveland, Ohio. Hope you enjoy your day and many more years of the same to come. Hi, Jason Samoski. Wishing you a happy St. Patty's Day to Ireland and here in Cleveland. Good morning. This is Dr. Norm. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Everyone is Irish on St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. Right. Uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to it. It's not going to be all that cold. I think it's going to be chilly, but there's going to be no rain, no snow. It's going to be perfect. It'll be a beautiful St. Patrick's Day. How did you lose the voice? Well, Jerry, I, I, would, I like to talk sometimes. Whoa! Uh -huh. So, just a little bit shocking, and the days the family sing-along was last night, and the new barley corn were out of this world. They were so great. So, thank you to the new barley corn, and to Mrs. Joanne Day. Without How much did the barley Joanne, corn pay for that? Oh, I don't know. I they know, they worked anything. for nothing for they, you last night. They did a great <laughs> job, but just a great job to um, my mother-in-law, Joanne. She, uh, phenomenal. And Father Carlin was there, and uh, Tom, Day, my husband, Brian. Everyone was a great night. All right, did you, um, you know, we had the Cleveland Pops Orchestra yes. last night. Yes. Uh, Sheehan was in mm -hmm. town. What a fantastic tenor. Justice Murphy did, was just telling me about it. Did you uh, did you see some of the postings I put on Facebook of him singing? I fantastic. did some video clips that are yes. a minute, minute and a half long. Very good. Fantastic. Yeah, so if you weren't able to make it there, we can, you could go on your Facebook. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to have a, a, a lot of video out on the program today yes. because J.C. Sullivan is here with his brand new video camera. And uh, this is... A, we're He's going to pick up. everything up, mistakes and all, and Mist he says there's no reruns, no, no and there's reruns. no editing. Mm -hmm. right. It's all going to go out there. So well, when we screw up, everybody's going to see what goes on here on a Sunday morning. It's pretty horrible well, at times. Yeah. Jerry, the pinstripe suit, everyone will see how stunning you look today. Very nice. Do you think so? Yes, very but I nice. I have to get dressed up because we have really a lot of dignified oh, guests in there. Yes. Yeah, on the, the uh, show this morning. We have Judge Yvonne Murphy from the Circuit Court in Dublin. She's with us. We're going to be talking about her career. Very interesting lady. She's a great, great yes. story. Uh, her husband, Adrian, who is the Supreme Court Justice in Ireland, was supposed to be here, but he's not feeling too good this morning. Right. He's resting up for the parade tomorrow. He yes, wants to right. be in fine fettle. And also we have the Grand Marshal at the parade, yes, Andy Dever, he's with us. Also John O'Brien yes. and Mark Owens, who are the co-chairs, Chairs. which is like the assistant Grand Marshals. Yes, they are. But, um, so they are, they're all with Dever. us. I think Alex is, Alex Quinn is coming in okay, to grace us with her presence. presence. Excellent. And seeing that you can't do as much talking as yeah, you Alex usually do. So Alex right. is going to be here. Mm -hmm. And of course JC. And you never know who else may stop in. Right. So anyway, Colleen, I was going to start the program before I go to any of the guests. I was going to play a few, uh, a few nice pieces of music, but I got a new one here to the radio program. So okay. that you don't hear too often on radio, and it's a, a lady called Lorena McKennett. She's okay. from Canada. She's Irish, Canadian, but an incredible singer. Has sold 40 million CDs worldwide. This lady, Fantastic. and this is a piece of music called the Mummers Dance. Did you ever hear it? Haven't heard of it. Listen to it. I think you'll like it. Looking forward to it. Oh, here we go. WHK we This uh this was uh, an incredible crisis. I brought you a book. I don't know if you've oh, seen oh, thanks, Andy. Thank you. I think we had a Mayo Society ad in there. I hope we did. I said Yeah, you're in there. Yeah. Okay, good. I think you are. I'm uh, Yeah, yes. we want we I am positive we did. Yes. I never knew you played the accordion. <laughs> I did. Right. <laughs> and he's good at it, too. Oh, yeah. Sunday oh, morning. Listen, listen, that's a Sunday morning listen, shot. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, yeah, he's got them off. He played this. I do. Never knew that. I don't play to any big audience. It's just for no, myself for and my fun, family. And, for uh, like a jam session. When there's nobody listening. <laughs> yeah. Andy, that's great news. What if I had known that or brought the old accordion around for you? You have yeah, one that you oh, you'll play it too. No, I don't play it. No. You have, you have one at home, I have, do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's wonderful news. They had a rare thing to have at the party. I mean, the party will play it anymore. They've gone into the <laughs> violin and the guitar. Yeah, but you know what? Country, country bands are starting to use it an awful lot more now. 
Yeah, but an Osborne. You're right. Yeah, because Buddy Conley from uh, when he's with the Andy Cooney band, he's with that McCain Avenue. A lot of his work is Nashville Section Marshal of the St. Patrick's Day Parade 2014 Grand Marshal. Also with us in the studio, of course, is John O'Brien, Judge Yvonne Murphy, and Mark Owens would be joining us also. And Steve Devers popped in. Did you bring, the, uh, Andy, get over to, close to that mic there. You brought the young fella along with you, did you, Steve, huh? How are you, Andy? Yeah, good morning, Jerry. Great Thank to have you with us. Thank you for inviting me down. I'm very happy to be with you. I haven't been here in a long time. Uh, but, uh, the last time you were here, you were here with your friend Patty Joe Joyce. Oh, yes. I just love his music. I really yes. I enjoy it. And, he, and you and he, uh, did Patty Joe and you grow up together? Yes, we did. Yes, and we're cousins as well. And we're within uh, five minutes, ten minutes walk from each other back at home. But I hope that you're going to play one of his CDs this morning. It's on. Uh, from, I'll tell you what. Me. It's on the list, and it's called "Farewell to Carlingford" by Patty Joe from Mayo. Oh, thank you. That'll be lovely. I see it right up here on the screen in front of me. But listen, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, your early days in Ireland. Uh, you grew up in the Ackle Island, right? I grew up in a place called Curran. It's on the peninsula, just before you go and adjacent to Ackle Island. And we had a small farm there, of course, and I worked there until uh, I finally was able to break away and go over. How old were you then, Andy? I was probably 17. 17? I was older than most who left at that time, but uh, I had to stay because there was I was one of the youngest. And worked on the farm, and so I took off for England, joined the exodus of, of all these people who were leaving at the time, and spent a bit of time there and uh, went working for a find company who had work going in Australia and wanted us to go to Australia to do a two-year contract. And so we were delighted, we went over to 90 degrees temperature for two years, over two years. And uh, then we came back and uh, there I met my lovely bride, was in Darwin, Australia. We came back to England for a time and discovered it was too cold in England. And we came to America. We had the dream of coming to America. We thought it was great, and I had a sister here and all that. There was no problem with an actual person finding their way to Cleveland, right? No, 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 it was great. Yeah. We arrived here, and it was around uh, my first uh, St. Patrick's Day parade was in uh, 1959, and it was cold. And after leaving warm temperatures, I didn't think we would stay around as long as we did, and here I am today. Uh, you were a contemporary of Steve Malloy, the late Steve Malloy, right? Say that again. You were a contemporary yes. of Steve. Yes, uh, indeed. Did you grow up together? You knew each other when you were kids? No, I Apple. didn't know Steve until I got here. But really? I didn't know uh, Steve and working with my construction jobs and, and uh, working on many things together, like uh, fundraisers and and the twinning of Ackle and Cleveland. I well, was you guys all worked on that together. Yeah. But Andy, what was it like? when you went uh, to England at 17, because I know I often spoke to Con Mangan about it, and Steve, yes. and the people that left at 17. I was 19 when I left, so I was really old yes. when I left. But <laughs> you guys went over to, to England and uh, started into construction. It was a hard life, wasn't it? Though? Uh, you probably didn't think it was. It was hard, but what, the way that we started, we went on agricultural work, like working for the farmers for a few months of the summer, and then the hay months, and digging potatoes and all of that. And I did a season of that, and after that, I went on public work. On the construction, huh? But it was hard. It wasn't easy to get on public work. You had to start at the bottom, like mm -hmm. agricultural work. Mm. And uh, so it worked out well. Did you, you didn't work for that famous uh, McAlpine, did you? No, I worked for a company Wimpy? called George Wimpy. George yes. Wimpy. Oh, <laughs> well, he was famous, wasn't he? And he had the uh, outlet in Australia, did he? Yes. There were, there were huge, huge construction. There would be like Bechtel there would were, be today, wouldn't they? That's right. In fact, they did many jobs together, Bechtel and Wimpy's. Mm -hmm. And they were all over the world, not just in Australia. They were everywhere. Canada, Middle East, Canada, right. Canada. Uh, and, uh, Andy, I want, I want you to hold that thought because I'm going to come back to you and we're going to talk to you about the parade and being awarded the Grand Marshal of the Parade. And I want to just switch over here to John O'Brien, the editor of the Ohio Irish News. And John, uh, you got the award. I, I like to call it the Assistant Thirties. There was a fellow named John Graham from New York that used to have an Irish newspaper here, and it died. That paper died around the time the West Side I was founded in 1931. 
and he had a great library and all that. And, and I think you seem to be following a bit in John Graham's footsteps. And it might be something nice to research for the for your newspaper. Very much. But uh, you have done an incredible job putting this newspaper together. I think everybody reads it, and it's, it gives the inform it gets the information out into the community. We like to think we do here, but the newspaper is nice to have that printed word. I still like newspapers. Uh, what inspired you to get that paper going? I was writing and had a book coming out. I was in Chicago on a book tour, and a fellow that writes for the Chicago Irish American News uh, was taking me around to shops, and he said, you know what, let me talk to somebody. Let me give you to someone, Cliff Carlson. And Cliff and I started talking, and a month later we launched the Ohio Irish American News. So just, just like timing, that? Just like that. We, 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 we talked in September, we met in October, and the first issue was in January. And that was a little over seven hump. years ago. Seven years. Yes. I, yes. I think you've got over the hump now. As they say, hump day is over. You've made it. We did. It was amazing. February was the largest February issue we'd ever produced this year. March was the largest issue in our history ever. Uh, so we see things turning. We see the economy turning around. People give us great verbal support. They really seem to do seem to love the paper. But we have to pay for the paper. Oh, right? There are columnists in that. And, and seeing now the <coughs> coming in and seeing people giving us their, their money, which tells us that they believe in us and what we're doing, uh, that, that's a thrill. Okay. Yeah, I understand the advertising business running this program it's only for 33 30 years. years, Jerry. It's only 33. 30, years. I think we're in a, I think we're starting our 35th or 34th. Right? Um, but I, you know, I, the community here should be very grateful to you for that paper. But also, you've spread it out not just in Cleveland. You're covering Cincinnati, Dayton, Akron. We are in Ohio and the six surrounding home. states. You're covering the, and you have a circulation what, of about 30,000, 40,000? A little over 50,000 readers 50, per month. 50,000 readers per month, that, that's great. So uh, how are you going to be able to take any pictures while you're marching in the parade? Are you going to have the camera hung around your neck and take a picture? You can take pictures of Andy as, uh, as the Grand Marshal. Andy's just going to hit me next time he sees me because <laughs> he knows I'm going to pictures of him. He, uh, he said, the first thing he said to me this morning, he said, good morning. And then he said, don't take any pictures. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're on, uh, we're on video. J.C. Sullivan is in the studio with his new video camera. I think Alex Quinn will be along shortly with J.C., your assistant. And she's going to be doing some personal interviews with you guys also. So all that's coming up here on the Irish program. Uh, Yvonne Murphy will be along in just a minute. But first... I want to play this and a couple of commercials, then we'll be back to Judge Avon Murphy. Stand by. Sorry, PJ McIntyre's today, Sunday, March 16th, St. Practice Day, Monday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, all day. Doors open at 7 a.m. The first 100 people in the door, proof of purchase, get a free t-shirt. There'll be dancers, pipers all day, and an Irish breakfast. Mary's Lane, one of our favorites, will be performing there all day tomorrow at PJ McIntyre's. Wednesday, March 19th, a guest bartender night, fundraising uh, from 6 to 9 p.m., and St. Baldrick's event will be going on. Friday the 21st, Birding River Ramblers, and Saturday, March 22nd, Charlie in the Box. PJ McIntyre's uh, wishes uh, Andy Dever and Supreme Justice uh, Murphy here uh, well wishes tomorrow and a great day in the parade. Sunday the 23rd, come in for a lovely afternoon of stories with Mike Mazur, 4 p.m. All proceeds will benefit the Brady Campbell School of Dance. And then in April, they've got the Sod Actors guests coming in, the Leo and Anto from the Sod Actors. Jerry, we did get quite a few phone calls too. They came in. A happy St. Patrick's Day to Peggy Kelly. That's from Trish, Vincent, and Sarah Gallagher. Congratulations to Andy Dever from Trish and Vincent uh, Gallagher. Eileen Simmerly called in. A happy birthday to Gracie Gibbons. It's her birthday. And happy St. Patrick's Day to all her friends. John Lavelle called in. And John wanted to put out to all the pioneers out there. If anyone wants to help march tomorrow in the parade, steps off at 104, meet them before 1 o'clock at 22nd and Superior. That's before 1 o'clock. And John and Maureen Lavelle say happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone as well. Also, a call came in uh, from London. 
Martin Campbell wanted to work for Andy. He said Andy Dever was one of the best bosses he ever had. Um, Andy uh, was a great guy to work for. He's from Valley Croy. He wishes you all the best tomorrow, wants you to do well. And also, um, uh, Martin's doing really well. He's got a big job in London now and very successful. Wait. So he owes it all right here to Andy. <laughs> I don't know, Marty. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, you know, Colleen, a lot of people probably think studio with us this morning, and uh, it's been a few years since you've been with us, uh, Judge Murphy, and delighted to have you back. Thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, we get close today. A pleasure to be here, Jerry. Thank you very much. Just make sure these these microphones are all working. I think you're you're on. There, yeah. Bring that closer to their job. John has been in the station so many times, he knows exactly what to do. <laughs> Welcome back to, to the program. Thanks very much, Jerry. And uh, sorry about uh, your husband, that he's a little under the weather, but he'll, he'll be fine. He's getting ready for the parade, yeah, right? Yeah, just a little bit of a croaky voice at the moment. So he, uh, he wants uh, to be in full voice for tomorrow. He says, well, he was yeah. in full voice last night at uh, the Cleveland Pops, Kieran Sheehan and... Um, the Cleveland Pops Orchestra. Wasn't it a magnificent concert? Uh, it, it was absolutely fantastic. Yes. Every aspect of it was terrific. The young dancers, you know, were just a joy to look at. Um, yeah, I put them out on Facebook this morning. Oh, fantastic. No, you're not on Facebook, probably. No, I'm not on Facebook oh, well, at the moment, anyway. Well, yeah, we, we, yeah. we'll get you on there. There's some nice yeah. pictures of you on there. Ah, oh, thank you very much. And you're very the, flattering, yeah. Jerry. And the, <laughs> dance, and the dancers, of course. And I want to say a special yeah, thank anyway. you, and I think we all do, to Collins and Scanlon. Not just for last night, but for everything they do in oh, the community. Yes. They're an incredible organization that puts an awful lot back into the community. And I cannot say enough good things about Tim Collins and, uh, and uh, Tom Scanlon. And Wonderful if, things they do for us. Yeah, if I could uh, add my thanks to them as well, and particularly to their two wives, Anita Scanlon and uh, Chris Collins, who have been so hospitable to both of us since we came here on Wednesday. We've had a fantastic time. You women really stick together, don't we you? We do. We do. Um, Judge Judge Murphy, you know, you, um, you're you retired from the circuit court That's right. in Dublin. Uh, now, where is that different from the, we'll say, the Supreme Court? Your husband is on the Supreme yes. Court. Yes, well, the circuit court is an intermediate court, and it deals with all indictable crime, except for murder and rape. So it deals with quite serious crime. Uh, apart from murder and rape, all f financial crime, uh, sexual crimes that are not uh, rape, um, all kinds of very serious assaults, that type of activity. And it can impose some fairly severe uh, sentences. So it's all the trials are done by jury that go ahead in the circuit court. And they're sent forward by the district court, having been assessed by the director of public prosecutions. Mm -hmm. And he decides, or she, we have a female, uh, director of Public Prosecutions for the first time in Ireland uh, oh. and uh, she and her team decide whether or not there is an arguable case to go forward mm -hmm. and then it, come, it will come into uh, my court and the trial would take place and the jury would give a verdict at the end of it and we, I would do the sentencing then if there was uh, a conviction. Sometimes people plead and there's sentencing after they plead guilty to the crime. Well you must feel right at home here in Cleveland, you're surrounded by lawyers when you come here. I am. I'm lawyers, and and a, lawyers, judges, and journalists. And we even got one here this morning, a former prosecutor with us, Steve Dever. I was just talking about Andy's him. son. And, and Steve uh, has been involved in the cutting edge doing murders for the most part here in, in this area. So that's Steve. very cutting edge crime. But you know, one thing. He's on, he's on now, that famous television program. What's that program, Steve, that you read? Nelly, my wife Nelly has watched you numerous times. Oh, the 48 Hours. 48 Hours? So, oh, yeah, he's, he's quite a movie star, yeah. too. But let, to divide, let, let me go back a bit to where you were born. Where were you born? In Donegal Town. Donegal Town. Mm. And um, where'd you go to school? Where'd you go to school? Well, um, my dad worked for the turf board, so we, we tended to move around a good bit. Is that like Bordemona? Bordemona, Bordemona. Well done, Jerry. I haven't forgotten your roots. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he, wor he worked for them. So we moved to Sligo when I was a baby, and I went to school in the Ursuline Convent in Sligo for my junior school. And then uh, we moved to uh, Galway, and my mother, who was a Johnny Gall woman, uh, she had been educated by the Louis in Monaghan, St. Louis Convent. And there was a convent there in Kiltimon, 
So she sent me mm -hmm. to Kiltimar, to the Louis in Kiltimar. That's where my sister went to school. Yeah. She went um, to boarding school. She terrorized the school for five years, I think. Did she? Oh, yeah. She, well, she's <laughs> older than you. So I, uh, I, I'm sure they were talking about her after. She, uh, she's it, listening in London, by the way. Well, it, it was a wonderful school. I'm sure she'll endorse that. Yeah. And then when you got out of high school, did you was your goal to become a lawyer right out of high no, school? No, no. My goal was to become a teacher. And uh, I got into teacher training college, and after uh, two weeks, I knew it wasn't for me. So uh, the government offered me a scholarship to become a barrister. I'm afraid I didn't even know what a barrister was when the offer came, because we hadn't barristers living in June. But my mother said, oh, law will never be wasted on you. So I took the scholarship, and I worked in the civil service full time while I was uh, pursuing my legal studies. And then qualified as a You did something else too, did you? I became an air hostess. Yes, I wanted to talk to you about that. For who? For was that for Aer Lingus? For Aer Lingus, yes. When, um, when did that happen? Well, I, as soon as I qualified as a barrister, I joined Aer Lingus for about a year as and a half. As a stewardess, yeah. was it for the adventure you joined it? It was. Really? It was, yep. Did you, yeah. have, did you have a lot of fun? I did because I was really fortunate. I was put on the American route immediately. So I was flying to Boston, Chicago and New York. They were the three destinations that Aer Lingus had at that stage. So I, I, I probably was, was on the plane with you a few times through the years. Yeah, I don't know how I, I missed you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I was very quiet <laughs> right, and reserved. Uh, so I, then you stayed with Aer Lingus for a, about a year, uh, and then what happened? And then I got a great opportunity to uh, set up uh, community information centres. Uh, these were a little bit like citizens advice bureaus in England where a citizen could come in and find out what their rights were in terms particularly of social services. And was this as a lawyer? Uh, this was as a lawyer. I'd done social science as well. It was the combination okay. of having done both. And we, uh, my body was called the National Social Service Board and it set up a network of these centres all over Ireland and, and I must say they're still going strong today. So uh, it was it was a very important contribution, and these are run by voluntary organisations. So people give their time free of charge to run these services, and they've really moved with the times. They have fantastic information available on the internet and on computers, and um, it's it's a very good source of information for the Irish citizen. Okay, we're going to break away for a minute. Hold that thought. I'm going to. We want to take it up. And they look like they're going to have some great crowds tomorrow. So after you go down to the parade, then you can go out to the uh, Avon. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. called the old Heritage Center. Yes, the Heritage Center. Center. Thank you. Help me. Yeah. The Irish Heritage Center. Um, I got a special message here. A happy St. Patrick's Day to Karen and Mary Ellen Sullivan, the Lallies, and all their friends, oh, and the Irish, Italian, Polish veterans communities. That's from J.C. Sullivan, so oh. our good friend. And uh, yes, Aaron and all those beautiful grandchildren that you have, JC. Thank you. So cute. Okay. Listen, now, uh, I'm going to play this piece of music, yes. and I'm, I think you're going to get probably get an email from Chicago. Okay. Because it's my son, Pat, yes. and he's in this new band in Chicago Okay. Uh, with Frank Quinn and Sheila Dorley. All right. The three of them have a new band, and would you believe it? I can't remember the name of the band. Oh, my God, Patrick. Would you believe that? Could you help your Patrick. father here? Send in the message. Send when, an email, when is the name Pat. of the band? Well, here yes. he is. They're a trad band. And the, I, even though he's my son, I, I'm not bragging, but it is a pretty good band. Listen to the music. Here it is. This piece is called The Last House in the Village. At QuinnIrishRadio.com, and there's a little icon that says Listen Live. You can go to that, or you can go to WHKRadio.com at 1048. Once again, the number 216-901-0945. We're going to be giving away a couple of tickets to the sober St. Patrick's Day. Now this, stand by. Every Friday and Saturday night down at Playhouse Square. Please join us for the improv audience. Sean, uh, Sean Lackey, he is the, uh, the writer of The Yank, of course, and uh, that's coming up in the film festival beginning the 19th and going on until the 31st. Uh, somebody told me, that, I think it was Tom Scanlon, told me that The Yank has sold out the first 
couple of days. Is that right there, mm -hmm. Connie, and do you know that? Yes, it is. They're only showing it twice. So the Irish archives had some uh, a special uh, set aside tickets, but those might be gone. But the first showing is um, sold out. So you need to look that up, and then hopefully in the future it'll be some other places. We got an email that came in. A happy birthday to Stick from Nippy. I don't know who that is, but happy birthday and thanks for listening with those oh, that things. Right. And a happy birthday and happy, happy St. Patrick's Day to uh, Andy Dever's daughter, Kay Coyne. Happy birthday to Kay. A happy 21st birthday to Matthew Byrne, and that's from Grandma and Grandpa Fox who are listening. And they are so proud and wanted to let everyone know, one know Erin Stefanson and her two friends will be singing the national anthem tomorrow before 104, before the parade kicks off on Superior Avenue. Don't mention mm -hmm. another radio station on my radio station. Did you say 104? Oh, I thought you no. meant 104. No, oh, 104 oh, oh. p.m. Oh, I was, oh, no, I was. No, the St. Patrick's Day parade berserk, kicks off at 1 o'clock and four minutes after 1 o'clock. Oh, I thought you were okay. talking about that other radio no, station. No, no radio show. Oh. This is the only radio show. Oh, 104. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. There I go, I'll draw attention to it. But I want to draw attention to this. People talk about many things with their loved ones, from day-to-day -day details to pick up for a, for a minute here. Andy, uh, well, I'll jump on, jump on to that microphone there. Um, how many kids do you and Margaret have? Uh, and that this big fella that here, he's a big kid, I'll tell you. We had nine children and uh, one deceased and 23 grandchildren. How many boys, how many girls? Uh, five boys and three girls. Five boys and three five girls. And Doreen, I see Doreen. Doreen's your daughter, right? Yes. I see Doreen in a lot of places. And she's got that great big smile like you have. Every time I see her, she comes up and she says, I'm Andy Dever's daughter. I says, Doreen, I, I know you anywhere. You're just like Andy. She loves to dance and she loves fun and she loves to be out amongst people and uh, she wants to host this one and that one and that's Doreen. And of course we got the famous son in the studio this morning. I, I hope JC are getting a few pictures of the fam our famous prosecutor here. And we're getting each other there. Oh, okay. each other. He's the TV star. Uh, Avon, I want to, uh, Judge Murphy, oh, there, there, there I am. I would like to talk to you for just a second. We have about three minutes to get us up near the top of the hour. Uh, when you finished uh, that project that you were on, what happened next? Well, <coughs> uh, then I, I joined the national radio station and became a journalist for a couple of years. And then I went to practice at the bar. I started off as a barrister in the courts. Then you're really actual practicing lawyer. Yeah. It'd be like a lawyer start oh, absolutely, to practice absolutely. here. Did you join a law firm? No, we don't, we, we don't do that in Ireland. We have two branches of the law. We have solicitors and we have barristers. And basically the way it works is the solicitor gets the clients and then briefs the barrister to do the work. That's really? the way it works. Yeah. Do you both have to get paid? You do. Oh yeah, my both God. Both have to get paid, I'm afraid. Oh yeah. my goodness. And so you, uh, you, became, you were a solicitor then? I was a barrister. Or a barrister? I, I mostly did work in court. That's the big distinction. I mostly did the court work. I would be maybe defending a case, or if it was a civil case, I might be running it on behalf of the plaintiff. Mm. Um, but you have to be a solicitor first before you become, no, is that right? No, no, there are two distinct branches. If, say, well, I just to put it simply, supposing you had a traffic accident, mm -hmm. you would go to the solicitor and say, I have been injured in this traffic accident, and I want to take a court case, and my car has been damaged as well. And the solicitor would send the papers to a barrister to draft up the case uh, to claim damages for you because you were injured and also to claim damages because maybe you were out of work or maybe to claim damages for damage to your car. And supposing the other side then disagreed, they said no, the jury was at fault for this uh, car collision and the case would then proceed to court and I would be acting for you in the actual court case but the solicitor would be preparing all the information for me, like uh, the cost of the car repair, uh, your loss of earnings, how much that cost. Uh, and I would be interviewing you in the court, asking you about your injuries. And obviously the other side would have a barrister and say, uh, they would maybe dispute your injuries, or they might dispute the fact that you were out of, court, uh, out of work for so long. And that's the way it works. The barristers do the court work and the solicitors do the preparation for the actual court case. When you explain this system to lawyers here, what yeah. do they think of it? 
well, they think it's a little bit odd, but then they know themselves that even in the big firms, they have people who are litigators, uh, litigators per se. But they be specialists. Uh, yes, that, exactly, exactly. And indeed, Steve, when he comes here, he may be able to elaborate on it a little bit because he obviously would have had a lot to do uh, with lawyers in the criminal area. We're going to come back and talk more about that uh, also. There are money in two churches, lived happily in them. Until the day that the guy was born and things got rather tough. And then the thing is fixed up that you've ever seen. My father, he went body, and young me father, she was free. Baptized by Father Riley, I was rushed away by car. The Green here on the Irish show on WHK in 1420, and uh, if you have some friends out of town or out of the country or anywhere in the world and you might be want to listen to the program, <coughs> they can do so by going to our call letters, which is whkradio.com, or you can go to our website, which is quinnirishradio.com, and um, when you're looking on it, you never know, you may see your photograph, there's over 500 pictures on there, and I think 490 of them has Connie in them. They are not. But Jerry, with that camera, you better watch out if you're ever around him. So, taking the photos. I took a lot of pictures last night at nice. the Pops. And, um, Excellent. It was, uh, I wanted to take a lot more movies, yes. but my battery was running low. Oh, right. Those smaller cameras, the battery doesn't last that long. Yeah. And I, only, I can only take about one minute, maybe one and a half minutes. Right. JC and John O'Brien, they understand that right. about, about cameras with my little camera. Mm -hmm. But uh, it takes nice pictures. Right. And I make sure the subjects look good. Right, Jerry. I know. Yes, with that. Um, the Lavelles called in. They wanted to thank everyone for coming out to the West Side IA for the fish fries. This coming Friday, Parmesan crusted tilapia, which sounds great. Congratulations to all the honorees, Mr. Dever, John O'Brien, for being here. And also welcome to uh, Justice Murphy. Uh, happy birthday to Jim Caffrey. Uh, get well to Jack McFarland. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all, especially the shut-ins. Uh, and also get well soon to Jeff Small. That's from your family. They uh, love you and feel better. And again, the O'Malley's Catering today, Box D Sunday from 4.30 to 6 p.m. And the roundabouts will be performing. Tomorrow at the West Side IA, they're going to have the corned beef sandwiches, dinners, and corned beef chowder. That starts at 4 o'clock and the Trillers at 5.30 will be there. Um, also, Dot and Mike O'Donnell, congratulations to Andy Dever. They called in for you. And we got an email from our friends over in Ireland, so we've got a lot of international listeners today. Um, hi, Jerry and Colleen. Hope you're well. We're looking forward to the parade in Swinford tomorrow. We have a great weekend so far, as Ireland won the Six Nations rugby title yesterday. Mayo are now playing in Cork in the football, and we are looking forward to Castlebar playing in the All-Ireland Club football final in Crow Park tomorrow. So a busy weekend on the sports front. Will you wish a happy St. Patrick's Day to my mom, Bernie Dalton, Auntie Pat, and all the Dalton and Kilban families on Clegg Road, and our Maltese says bow wow to <laughs> Anastasia. We are now... Um, Jerry, to your town of Bal Balina. Balina. <laughs> oh, 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 darn it. Oh, oh, I was oh, almost, I oh, almost oh, had the whole thing. Oh, I'm going to give you a hell of a yeah. Did you get this on the video? <laughs> to see the parade and fireworks, which are on you today. You got it live, right? Balina, 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 um, which are on the parade today. Uh, they're doing fireworks there. Have a great St. Patrick's Day to all. From Deidre, Pat, John, Rachel, and Brian Coyne, Swinford County Mayo. Bellana. Bellana. Okay. All my relatives are listening to you. I thought it was saying ballerina for you to be a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait a minute. I saw some lovely young ladies last night at the Day Family Store, <coughs> and I told them all about could you be the next Rose of Charlie. <coughs> so these young ladies, as ambassadors, I really hope that some of John Carroll girls 
And uh, you're going to do this? Oh, yeah, I have what? all the information on it. But is a place to you. Are you going to enter? I, I can't now. I just got married. Remember, I'm young enough, oh, though, that, but I can't oh, now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> now, you should be really doing this, not me, mm -hmm. but I have it in my hand here. Are you a young lady of Irish descent between the ages of 18 and 28? Do you know somebody who is? The Northern Ohio Rose Center is reaching out to young women who would love the opportunity to get a free trip to Ireland to represent Ohio in the 2014 International Rose of Tralee. Now, this is not a beauty pageant or talent contest. The Rose of Tralee International Festival celebrates modern young women in terms of their aspirations, ambitions, intellect, social responsibility, and Irish heritage. Why, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of stuff. This is the festival's 55th year, and roses are represented from over 70 centers around the world, including the US, Canada, Europe, Australia, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Ireland. To take part, in, to, to be part of this experience, visit the Rose of Tralee website at www.roseoftralee.ie and fill out the Rose of Tralee questionnaire and the Northern Ohio Rose application. Any questions, please contact inquiries at northernohiorose.com or you can private, private message them at Northern Ohio Rose at Facebook.com. The deadline for application coming up fast, 21st of March, so don't delay. Get your application in today. Take the chance to have a life-changing experience and join a global community of roses. Details and applications can be found at www.roseoftralee.ie and northernohiorose.com. Look forward to meeting you. It's a wonderful event, isn't it? Uh, Judge Murphy can talk about it. She's you know about the yes, Rose Trolley. Oh, yes. You're very familiar with it. It's a wonderful organization and a great opportunity. Oh yeah, it? and 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 even if you don't win, it's a definitely a life changing experience. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a free roses, trip. Uh, they have a fantastic time, and they get an escort to accompany them around. Uh, I believe there's a lot of fighting with young guys trying to be escorts. Absolutely, absolutely, and. Uh, I must say the talent that has emerged in recent times is fantastic from all over the world. Yes, it so is. it gives the Irish people an opportunity to see what, what's out there as well in terms of Irish talent. Last year the Texas Rose won the whole thing, yeah, I think. Yeah, one of, the, one of the most watched programs on television in, in the entire calendar year. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Much yes, better. I wanted to say um, a, a very uh, big congratulations and also best wishes on um, going out to the Mother of the Year, Bridie Joyce. And let me tell you, this year's St. Patrick's Day Parade, um, international guests are here. And Bridie's uh, nieces, Catherine Joyce and Maura Joyce, came in all the way from Ireland to support their Aunt Bridie. And congratulations from all her nieces and nephews over there in Ireland who uh, couldn't be here. But bringing in international guests, she wishes the best with uh, Andy Dever and um, John O'Brien and Mark Owens. Oh, so, very okay. good. Yes. Uh, listen, we're going to go to the Clatter in a minute, yep. so I'll see if you can put it up there on the computer. In the meantime, I want to go to Phil Fogarty. He's going to tell us about lawn care. A four-piece Celtic traditional Irish rock band, plus Irish step dancers, bagpipers, and the Heineken girls. Giveaways on Patty's Day uh, keepsakes to be distributed all day long. So don't forget about the clada and the uh, Lenten fish fries on Friday. It's a great place to go uh, any day of the week out there by Legacy Village. Okay, good. Every Friday and Saturday night down at Playhouse Square. Please join us for the improv audience interactive comedy show that takes you back to the mythical town of Grappling County Sligo where the villagers <coughs> Friday and Saturday nights pay homage to their dear friend Flanny. You'll meet Mayor O'Doul, Father David Fitzgerald, Fiona Finn, Andy, I'm going to go to you. We're going to talk about Patty Joe. www.playhousequare.com. Every Friday night at the Kennedy's Theater in Playhouse Square. Come join us and help us. Put the fun in funeral. Right there. That's right. Watch out for the Yank. Also, John um, Sean Lackey is the uh, the writer and the producer of the Yank, and I think it's the first time a local uh, movie, an Irish movie, has ever been done here in Cleveland. And again, it's sold out, so it should be a lot of fun. Uh, Andy Dever, the Grand Marshal of the Brain, is with me this morning. Delighted to have you, Andy. And uh, I must say, when I was in Acla this summer, <coughs> I was over by your house. Where you where you grew up, yes. uh, near it's near um, the Gallagher house, yes. the Gallagher mansion, <laughs> should I say? But I tell you, the Dever mansion looked pretty good too. 
Uh, Andy, uh, we're going to play a piece of music by a friend of yours, and that is uh, uh, Patty Joe, Patty Joe Joyce. But first, you said you wanted to talk a bit about last night and Mary Jordan speaking at the West Side Irish American Club. And a lot of people don't know this, but Mary Jordan is a Pulitzer. She won a Pulitzer Prize a couple of years ago for her book. The Prison Angel. I read the book and she gave it to me when she was on the program a few years ago. Uh, and she's working on a book now, I believe, about Amanda Berry and the, the young ladies that were captured um, by Mr. Castro last year. But uh, tell me about her last night. Uh, I, I bet everybody was really delighted to have her there at the, uh, at the ball. Uh, last night, Mary Jordan, she was great, and I want to welcome her here to Cleveland. It was a pleasure to hear her. She was, she was excellent. She covered so many places she'd been to, and all the people she interviewed, and she put the Washington Post, as you know. And mm -hmm. She was great. Her mother was there as well. And was it always Nora there? I mention one thing. When oh. I came to America many years ago, I lived in the same apartment with uh, Nora and her husband at that time. And uh, well, we have fond memories, but uh, I have to congratulate Mary Jordan. She did a fantastic job. We haven't time to go into it. I'd like to mention about the club last night. It was sold out. It was out of this world. It was a great evening. And on last Saturday night, they had 550 people for the pre St. Patrick's Day dance and two bands going. And uh, it was really great. And that's the club that I mostly belong to. But with the United Irish Societies, I'm so happy that they choose me to be their Grand Marshal. And I wish everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. And uh, I will have a great day. And uh, I think that's about it. You are going to blow the whistle. I will blow the <laughs> Little spiked coffee. Paddy Joe is from uh, right from my village. And yeah, this next uh, next singer is a friend of Andy. And uh, did you grow up together? We grew up together. He's a bit younger than I am. He, yeah, but uh, very talented, very talented. Musician. He was an entertainer since he was about fifteen years of age. He was on radio then. Now he's pretty much on Midwest radio uh, very often whenever he has time to go on there. Mm -hmm. And he has made mm -hmm. I think about eight or nine CDs. And uh, we're very proud. <coughs> Well, Andy, I've known you for about 40 years, and I found out something about you this morning that I didn't know before, and that, that is that you play the accordion. <laughs> well, I never, I never, I saw a picture of it. I can't believe it. How come you weren't playing with Bartley Reap and Al O'Leary and all those characters? There aren't too many playing the, the knows that I am playing the accordion. I'm not much good at it, Jerry. I just oh, like to no, uh, I hear have your a son, bit of fun. Steve. Steve said you were so good you could almost teach him. Oh my God, I'm, I'm good maybe for waltzes and quick steps. And but he, he decided to pursue the law instead yes, of music. Yes, he did. <laughs> okay. Well, here's Patty Joe, Andy's friend. Right, right, okay, Mr. Yes, Mr. <laughs> you know, Quinn. You know what he says to me What did he say day. to you? When I said to him, I, um, mm -hmm. You know, Brian, sometimes it really gets a little rough with Colleen on a Sunday morning, two hours. He says you ought to be with her the rest of the week. No. And he says it's wonderful. No, do you see how you try to start the problems at home? I don't believe it at all that he said that. No. Uh -uh. No, no <laughs> anyway, I'm kidding. Yes, okay, congratulations to Andy Dever and to um, Bridie Joyce, and that's from um, Bridget and Fran Doherty, uh, Bridgie and Fran Doherty, and the boys. Uh, she, she, they wanted you to know, Andy, it's nice to see nice people, to have nice things happen to them. Yes, it is. We had a caller call in about, oh, Danny Boy. Are we going to yeah. play it or what? Danny what Boy? Yes, it's yeah, from Larry. Yeah. It, yeah. I also wanted to say, uh, there's so many uh, amazing people that are here for this 147th St. Patrick's Day Parade, but uh, Anne Teresa Kilbane is the 2014 Queen That's from the right. West Side and a beautiful young lady. Yeah, we have and a talented that at all. and a smart young lady. Midge Annan, who Midge, the, her tireless work and um, love and for Irish heritage and the library and the books and, and everything is, is amazing. So Midge Gannon, the two, 2014 Woman of the Year. The West Side Irish American Club's Man of the Year is Kevin McDonough. And we've had Kevin on the show and Kevin's hard work and, and all of that um, that he does, just great people. So again, all the um, honorees you know, that are here with us today, um, and um, uh, Mr. Tom Lynch, and also Mr. Tom Lynch, congratulations to him. And I know you know the East Side uh, has special uh, guests. The uh, member of the year at the East Side is Donna Jones, who, whom I have known for 
30 some years, wonderful hard worker at the East Side Irish American Club. John O'Brien was there the other night when the, all of the honorees was, were presented. Andy Devereux was there and Mark Owen. Uh, it was a wonderful night, wasn't it, John? Huh? Yeah. Uh, it, was. it was fantastic. Great it was to see great. everybody together, all the families. It was great. And uh, the East Side IA, by the way, has. Um, Revised their Shanaki, the news newsletter. I really like the it new looks design. Great. It's great. It's in color and the color photos, and it just looks fantastic. So, maybe if you want to become a member of the East Side Club, do so. I think I think you'll really enjoy right. it. Jerry, let's give those call those tickets away. All right. Afford we'll the caller. That. That's why I got you in that's right. here. You know, you forget nothing. No, oh, that's right. Let's go. So right. we'll uh, do, and that uh, starts tomorrow at four o'clock. No wonder Brian complains about you. Uh, we will take the fifth caller at two one six nine zero one zero nine four five. If you want, if you would like to go to the sober St. Patrick's Day, and it is a wonderful They're event. Coming. So two one six nine zero one zero nine four five. Number five, you'll really enjoy it. There's only I think about twenty or thirty tickets left. So there'll be about 500 people. Mary Agnes Kennedy is one of the entertainers I know. Also the Kilroys, and of course Jack Kilroy, Bill Denham. They'll all be there. It's going to be a great show. That's if you don't want to go to the pubs. There's, there's, there's a spot for everybody in this city, and we'll, we we um, we just make want everybody to have a lot of fun tomorrow, regardless whether you have a drink or not. Uh, John, I want to I want to get back to you here for a minute. And then I want to talk to uh, Judge Murphy. What are you going to be doing tomorrow now? How in the world are you going to be able to write and all the, do all the things you're going to Because I know there's going to be a lot written about this parade in next week, in, in next month's journey, um, newspaper. How are you going to find time? I take a lot of notes. Uh, I start out the day like Andy does at St. Coleman's with the West Side IA for Mass, and then we go down to the parade. Uh, delighted to march again. Last year I marched twice. I marched with the Sheriff's Office, and then I went back and marched with West Side oh, IA, and I enjoyed that. that it's was a good thing fun. you're so young. Well, you know, it keeps you keeps you going, you know. And you have good shoes. Yeah, and I'm gonna looking forward to Brendan Gorman and uh, Marie McDonald's great party up at the Hyatt. Looking forward to that. Uh, and then the honorees have the banquet, the AOH banquet at the Renaissance to end the night. So uh, are you going month. to are you going to the Renaissance banquet? I am. Oh, yes. okay. So I, I don't know if I mentioned this or not to you, but uh, Dr. O'Reilly. Uh, the Minister for Health and the Consul for General Aidan Cronin from Chicago, they will be in John every March in the parade, but they will be there for that. And I know, uh, I know Judge Murphy knows them, uh, knows uh, him personally. Um, there was something else I wanted to ask you about uh, the. Uh, uh, well, the, pa the paper will will cover the St. Patrick's Day parade not only in Cleveland but all across the state, and that will be out. Uh, a little bit later in the month, we'll have it online as well. Obviously, you know, you take hundreds and hundreds of photographs, and how do you pick which one tells the best story of Cleveland or any of the St. Patrick's Day Parade? No. You can't. But we put them on our blog, and we put them on social media, Facebook page, and all that, just to try to let everyone know what's going on. Give such a good impression. It's an amazing, amazing 147 years. You know, the third oldest, the fifth largest parade in the United States. Uh, the United Irish Society just does an incredible job of making sure it's a family-friendly, fun event for everyone. I would say next to New York, we have the best organized parade. The only difference between ours and New York is New York do not allow floats in the parade. It's all marchers. We do allow floats, but uh, there's a lot of rules and regulations that go with the parade in Cleveland. I think that is one of the things that has kept it. The, uh, the biggest event in Cleveland that draws the biggest crowd in Cleveland every it's year. About 400,000 people come to watch it. Yes. So Judge Murphy, you're going to be on display tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I want to I want to ask you, uh, Yvonne Murphy. By the way, is our guest this morning, Judge Yvonne Murphy from the Circuit Court in Dublin. Uh, she is married to Adrian Hardiman, who is on the Supreme Court, the Irish Supreme Court. Unfortunately, he could not make it this morning, but he was my guest a few years ago when he was the guest of Collins and Scanlon. You are the guest of Collins and Scanlon this year. Uh, I know you want to say a, a few things. Well, we want to talk a bit about Collins and Scanlon and all the things they do, but you're going to um, use. You were engaged in a commission inquiry back in 2006 on child abuse. You want to talk to a, a little bit about that? Maybe, maybe just a small bit, but uh, basically the government set up a commission of inquiry to look into how uh, the question of child sexual abuse was dealt with in the Dublin Archdiocese of Dublin and uh, it uh, basically dealt with priests who were in the Archdiocese of Dublin 
who may or who may not have uh, been involved in child sexual abuse. And that task was given to a commission which I chaired and I was helped by a number of other people. There were uh, two co-chairs, Isha Mangan, a Sligo woman, and uh, Hugh O'Neill, a Tipperary man. And basically what we were charged with doing was uh, selecting a representative sample of uh, priests from the total number that the diocese told us they thought may have been involved uh, with uh, child sexual abuse. It obviously was a sad chapter uh, in uh, the history of, uh, I suppose, the Dublin Archdiocese because uh, as a result of the inquiry, uh, we were able to show that, uh, in fact, the Archdiocese's main uh, thrust was in um, avoiding scandal, um, protecting their own assets, um, uh, protecting the church's reputation, and obviously secrecy was a big element in the whole matter. But I should say on the positive side that uh, the church authorities were very cooperative with this investigation. They, they helped with it and that since uh, it, it was completed, believe it or not, in July of 2009 and published, uh, most of it was published in November of 2009. And um, since then, the church has been very proactive in developing procedures for uh, the clergy and the laity attached to the church when they're dealing with children. So there are very uh, strong procedures for dealing with that and there's also training for anybody who is involved in uh, church related activities which is very important yeah. as well. So there's positive outcomes from it as well. Very sensitive subject, no question yeah. about it and I have to deal with it very, in a very sensitive way too I'm sure. Yeah. And it appears like you really did the work and it has worked out for the better. But let me ask you about the, the Irish economy. It seems to be on the way back. You're paying, yeah. you're paying off the debt. Uh, yeah. The European bank seems to be happy enough with you. Yes, we, we, we have been very fortunate and I think we're the first to emerge really from uh, the European um, people coming to see us. Uh, but they weren't no, very we're, popular, the, uh, the IMF and, and, and the European um, overseers. But fortunately, they exited Ireland there in December, and since then, uh, we've returned to the bond market, which apparently, in economic terms, and I'm not an economist, I stress, uh, but our, our bonds are selling very well, and uh, that has been a, a really good thing from Ireland. In fact, even yesterday on Bloomberg, it showed that the bond yields had uh, gone down so much, and, and that was on the ticket below mm -hmm. the, the Bloomberg news. I suppose where uh, the Irish economy has been doing really some good is in relation to unemployment because we had very high employment during the boom years. A lot of it, employment, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, a lot of it was construction related and unfortunately when there was a dip in construction uh, quite a number of people had to, had to leave Ireland because there simply was no jobs for them. But the good news is that unemployment, unemployment now has mm -hmm. dropped from 15.1% in uh, 2012 down to 11.9% in the last month. So that's very positive. Significant. Uh, yeah. And the other great thing that has happened is a lot of companies have come into Ireland, like eBay, Twitter, they're expanding their services. And as you know, the pharmaceutical industry from the USA has always made a very positive contribution in Ireland and they're continuing to expand and just recently and I suppose a local story here that uh, Eatam, uh, Eaton, the uh, company that Eaton has developed, yes. Eaton Corporation that have uh, developed a fantastic premises outside Cleveland, they're setting up uh, a headquarters, in, in, headquarters in, yeah. in, in Ireland uh, as well so that's another bit of good oh, news yeah, for positive. Ireland. Um, so um, the country is, is doing well, it's on the road back. It is, it is on the road back, but obviously, uh, you know, the uh, Irish diaspora are very important to any recovery that happens in Ireland. Uh, certainly last year we had a concept called the gathering where people were encouraged to uh, uh, 
bring friends and relations back to Ireland and that led to a huge increase in tourism in Ireland. We had 8 million visitors there last year. I was one of them. Yeah, as you know, it, it was... It really Andy was, was too. Yeah, John was too. Yeah, up 12% up from the previous yes. year of visitors. It was great. Yeah, and we were thrilled to see the Americans coming back because there's always a, a very warm... Well, there's a very welcome. close bond between the, between the two countries. Exactly. There's no, there's no question exactly. about it. Exactly. So we, we would hope that that uh, would continue, that uh, you, know, you people will be part of our future our new future as we go forward because you have contributed so much to our past. Well, I am. Um, what, uh, what career move are you going to make now? You, you've done almost everything. <laughs> Well, what's the next step? I think I'll, I think I'll sail into the sunset. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I think you will not yet, uh, Judge. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe you'll come over here to America and become a lawyer and start set up a practice oh, here. We will, need you give another... me, will you give me some business, will you, Jerry? I certainly will. <laughs> we, need, uh, right. we need another Murphy law firm. Right, right. right. Yeah. Okay, so, please. It is uh, 11.33 here on the Irish Show, WHK. Did we give away the tickets? Yeah, we did. We gave away the Who tickets. And the winner of the tickets is Dr. Charles L. Uh, uh, Beatty. And Dr. Beatty, his name will be at the desk. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. He's the winner. And uh, the two tickets. And so what time does it start, Jerry? Where's the flyer? Then right there. There's the flyer. So Dr. Beatty, Charles Beatty. Call me will be Brian, there. will you? Call. Good. And uh, <laughs> Valley Hitch Boys, uh, he'd love to hear a slip jig, too. Uh, the winner gave a request. Oh, Dr. What time B, does it start? Dr. B2B begins at five, from 5 until 8 p.m. at a Hearns Catering. And the phone number to reach... Uh, uh, 740-759-1253. Uh, That's Jack yes. Kilroy's phone number, I believe. 440-759-1253. So congratulations. And I'll send an email to Jack with his name. Also, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to John Henley, and that's from his family. We got some emails that came in. David and Margaret Lavelle and the crew. Hello, Mom and Dad. Love you very much. Always thinking of you in my heart and warm wishes. And then also from Pat Burfield, congratulations to Andy Dever on being the Grand Marshal of the Parade. And so, very good. Congratulations, Jerry. All right. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's hear from PJ McIntyre. Stand by. Yeah, yeah, you know, he flies the 777s for British Airways. So I sent him an email yesterday. He never responded back to me. That wasn't the plane that disappeared, was it? No, no, but he, um, he told me he flew in the week after, remember the, the plane crashed in San Francisco? Yeah, he flew in at 777 there that the week after that, I was told. Lovely day, regardless of the weather and the best thing about it is is that um, Dad's understanding of his faith and that the big part of tomorrow is to begin with church. So we're all delighted to celebrate this with him. I know he was a great friend with Father Walsh, weren't you, Andy? Yes, a close friend of Father Walsh. We had been his in Patrick's Day events at uh, Brennan's with Father Walsh. Yes. They're still going. How is he doing? I haven't He's seen him in a while. He's just retired uh, at the... At the ripe old age of uh, 18 something. But oh, <laughs> he's doing great. well. We saw him the other day, right? He's well, just great. Let me that. ask you, Steve. Whenever we, you know, just the general public, we meet Andy Dever, and everyone says the same thing. Oh, he's such a great guy, nice guy, and he's always smiling. Was he always that way when you were kids growing up, or when you were breaking a window once in a while in the house, or throwing a baseball, to, or messing up the house? Was he always that way? Well, we had some moments, but uh, <laughs> he's generally been a very good natured. There's one thing that I admire about my dad is, is that, uh, uh, you know, the positive attitude and. Uh, uh, really tried to instill in his children and, and everyone that he met to, to look at the good things of life. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be a person that can get riled up too easily. Oh, he can get it going. Can, can he? get him the right way, yes. We're finding right. things out about right. you, Andy. <laughs> so uh, you're all going to be celebrating for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, anything special planned or are you just going to travel to different venues? Well, it, it, it's a pretty full day, but again, the most important thing is to start with the Mass at St. Coleman's and then to be down there on the avenue on time and wait for him to blow the whistle. And I like the way you said on time. Off. Is that a hint to some of the siblings uh, to make sure uh, yeah, you get there on try. time? It's like orchestrating cats to get them all together. Yeah, I know, I had that trouble, I remember, it was terrible, oh my yes. goodness, some of them were straggling in at the last two minutes, where's so-and-so, what's he doing, why isn't he here, exactly. you go through that too, yes. so you're all going to try and march with Dad, 
He yes, is very proud to do that and to, to walk right behind him and uh, and to enjoy the day and to see all of the people and all of the, the people who participate and make the effort to make this probably, I think, one of the finest events in Cleveland every year. And, uh, you know, the recognition has to go to all of those clubs, the United Irish Societies, and all of those countless volunteers who, who work at it to make this such an important event, not only for your faith and for your heritage, but for this community. So I'm just delighted to be with my dad and to celebrate this day. Very good, Dad. Thank you, Steve. Steve Thank Dever. You. I do. Well, I know I do she was here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, she's very good. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk, she was an ultimate one yeah. No, she was with uh, Oh, Canada, sorry. Canada. Yeah, she's only your right yourself. She's only your sister. Leo's. Isn't she your sister? Yeah. 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 Yeah.